Hello, it's Steve here again from the Studio One Soapbox. In today's video, I want to take a revised look at how to gain stage within Studio One. And you can use this method in any other DAW. Uh, the first video I did on the subject, I seem to have inadvertently caused a lot of confusion. I do apologize for that. That was not my intention. So I want to take another look at it and show you a little update as well as to how to gain stage in Studio One. So, first up, I've loaded in our tracks. Here are all our stems. Um, I like to send my stems to their individual buses, but you don't need to do that for the gain staging purpose. As you can see, there's all my guitar stems sent to a guitar bus. So you don't need to use buses for this. Just make sure that all your tracks are highlighted. Should you have 100 tracks, make sure every single one of them is highlighted so that you can do this. So I click on track one, I go to the very last track, whatever it may be, 40, 100, how many, doesn't matter how many stems you've been sent, whatever it is. Hold on shift, click on the last track, and that is all your tracks highlighted and selected all your faders. So now what we want to do is go to the loudest part of our song, usually the chorus, and pull down our faders uh, to average around zero on our VU meter. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with that. Let's get rid of our clip indicator. And we, as you can see, we've had to drop all our faders down by minus 12.9 dB, so that it averages around the zero mark on our VU meter. Let's just double check that. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Now that's where I originally stopped in the first video and people still had issues thereafter. A lot of people said to me on the YouTube channel that they prefer to have their faders at zero and I know a lot of people prefer to work that way. So, getting our faders back to zero when we need to be minus 12.9 down on our volume to hit around zero on our meter, how do we do that? It's a quite a simple process. If we get rid of our console view, hitting F3. If we then highlight all our tracks by dragging across them, as you can see, all tracks are highlighted. Hit F4 on our keyboard, brings up our track inspector. And if we come down on the part till we see the word gain. Now, it was minus 12.9, we needed to come down. So if we hit type in minus 12.9, hit the return key. Now all these tracks have now come down by minus 12.9. Uh, this would be called clip gain in Pro Tools. In Studio One, it's called the fan gain. And this is pre-fader. So uh, this is before it even hits the faders that we pulled all the tracks down, every single one, by minus 12.9. So let's get rid of our inspector, F4. Let's get back our console view. And here we can now set these all back to zero. So highlight our first one, click on our last one, and hold control and click one of the faders. Boom, back to zero. Now let's go back and check our levels as all these uh, event gains should be pulled down by minus 12.9 allowing us to put all our faders back to zero. Let's see. Somebody scream. Okay, so there we go. That's how we do that. 
So everything has been brought down, minus 12.9. We used our faders to see how much to come down by. We changed the clip gain. As you can see, highlighted, let me get rid of the console, F3. Highlighted every single track, make sure all your events, all your clips are highlighted. Go to the first track, go to the gain, drop it down. In this case, it was minus 12.9, we needed to come down. And enter it there, hit the return key. And now all the events, all the clips, uh, their gain will be reduced by minus 12.9. We get rid of our inspector, F4. Get our console back up. And now if we highlight all these, hold down the control, click on a fader, puts them all back to zero. So as you can see, all our faders are now zero. And so are the buses that I was using in this case. And when we play this back, we're averaging around zero and no clipping anywhere, which is excellent. So I hope that makes things a bit clearer. Now, if we want to take this one step further and we want to use the Jakir King method for setting our levels so we can build around that. Um, what Jakir likes to do, um, you'll hear about this from Green Cochran on the Recording Revolution or a few other places on the internet. Very good stuff from Graham. Um, he talks to Jakir King. Jakir King likes to set his levels in the box by having his kick drums, let's open this up, highlight our two kick drums, have them hidden around minus three on the VU meter. So let's see if we can get our kicks to hit around minus three. Here we go. Okay, we're absolutely nowhere near it. Let's raise these faders. Right, as you can see, we're nowhere near minus three. We're hitting at minus 10. And we're maxed out on our faders. Why is this? Well, this is good that this happened because it shows you that even setting your initial levels, that you may have to readjust. Now, there's no reason to get confused here. As you can see, we've maxed out plus 10. So what I want is, I want these two faders back down at zero again, where everything else is. And using the same method that we used earlier, we need to now bring down the clip gain or the event gain on all our drums by uh, 10 dB so that we can drop these back to zero. So if I come out of our console view, call back up our a, uh, inspector. Um, let's just highlight our drums. Let's get out of that. Let's just highlight our drums this time. And we want to take 10 back again. So that's just minus 2.9. And that's brought all our drums up um, plus 10 dB, which is what we need. As you can see, as I click individually, they're all at minus 2. But our other tracks are still at minus 12.9. Okay. So we had to make a readjustment there because we'd run out of fader room. We'd maxed our faders out. So if I get back out of that, hit F4, get rid of the inspector, F3, to pull up our console view. And now we can bring these back to zero. Let's hold control, click on the fader. And now let's try and get minus three again using this Jakir King method of high sets his levels for his bass, guitar and his kick drum and builds the rest of the mix on top of that. Here we go. Okay, about plus 6.8, as you can see. 
Now this time we'll leave that alone because that's our level set. And we seem to be averaging around the minus three that Jakir King likes his kick drums to be heading. Let's try again. Okay, so our averaging around minus three are two kick drums. Now what Jakir then likes to do is bring in his bass guitar. So here we have a bass DI and a bass amp. You might actually add in a bass distortion here if it's not cutting through the mix, or I'm sure there'd be all sorts of processing going on in the bass. But that simply means you just keep going back and checking these two levels. If I was now to add any processing on these two kick channels, obviously I would have to come back and double check that minus three is where they're heading. So I might move these up or down, or if I've put a plug-in then, I will use the trim feature of the plug-in and pull it down until these are averaging around minus three. You've got to stay on top of your levels, people. They're in, they very easily creep up on you without realizing when you're inserting uh, plugins or if you've did any EQ boosts or anything like that, you'll need to reset them but once you have your processing done and you've set it at minus three, you'll be done with your kicks. You'll not need to revisit them. The same with your bass guitar. So let's add in our bass guitar that you care likes with the kick to now be averaging around zero. So minus three, just the kick. When he adds in his bass guitars, he likes them to average around zero. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so we've had to come up plus 1.3 on our bass. And that's where Jakir likes his levels to be. His kick drum averaging at minus three, where we had to do a readjustment and bring all the drums up by uh, plus 10. Uh, because we'd run out of fader room, a little adjustment on the drums. And now we're working with bass and bringing that in uh, to average around zero again. our kick drums averaging around minus three pre-processing of course then we add in our bass and we're averaging around zero and that's where Jakir would set his initial um, foundation for his mix his kick hitting at minus three his bass guitar coming in then and averaging around zero and he would just build the rest of the mix around those two elements. And of course, if you do processing on your kick tracks or on your bass tracks, keep coming back, double check your levels, minus three on the kicks, whatever you've done to them. Uh, zero then with the bass guitar, whatever you've done to that as well, add it in. And that is the basis for Jakir's method of setting your low end and the foundation for every mix. So I hope between these two things, there's no more confusion. And I hope you did find that easy enough to follow. So thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me. And as I say, I hope I have caused no further confusion. I hope that's plain, simple and to the point. So happy mixing and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.